hello um i'm gonna try to make this video not super long i'm finding that i talk a lot longer than i thought i would but i did want to i'm feeling good today and clear-headed and so i wanted to make a video about my um, mastectomy surgery that i had in june last year and kind of what that was like and um like just all like kind of all about that that process so um the reason i needed a mastectomy was because the cancer in my in my breast was taking up like the majority of my breasts and so a lumpectomy wouldn't be feasible because there wouldn't quite be like enough tissue left and so they needed to just remove everything and they were able to um they thought I was a good candidate and there was no reason why they thought I shouldn't be able to have immediate reconstruction and so I was able to do both have the mastectomy and then also have reconstruction with a silicone implant given like at the same time of surgery when you're pregnant sometimes they wait to the second trimester to do a surgery like this but they weren't sure if I was going to need chemo and they want to give you chemo during the second trimester if you're pregnant and so they decided that it was okay and like it was they thought it was healthy enough and the baby was looking good to do the surgery when I was six seven weeks pregnant um it just in case I was gonna need chemo I would be able to have time to heal and then need chemo and again remember if you remember my first diagnostic video I did not at that time they decided I did not need chemo so the day before um, my surgery, I met with, I had to go to the hospital and um, they wanted to check. They're also during the surgery going to check my lymph nodes and make sure that they were clear. And so I had like this injection done in my armpit and it like sent this dye in my lymph nodes and it sent them. And then like during the surgery, they were able to like track it, like map it and be able to tell whether the cancer had spread or not. And that actually was a little bit of nerve wracking because, um, it's not the safest thing during pregnancy. There's like all these waivers you have to sign. And, but I was um, told by my doctors and told by like people I trust, doctors, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that the chances are so tiny of there being a problem that, it, and it's worth the risk because this is the way they can tell to see if the cancer has spread. And that's really important for my treatment. Um, I also, you know, I was pregnant and I had to fast for like starting at midnight the night before the surgery and the surgery was originally scheduled for like 4 p.m. It's kind of a lot when you're pregnant to like not eat. And so my doctor told me to eat, order a pizza at midnight and eat pizza at midnight. And so I think I made a frozen pizza, but I had a pizza party at midnight, which I did not mind. I was pregnant. My last pregnancy, I was like craving pizza and like fried pickles the majority of the pregnancy. So, um, the surgery ended up getting moved up to like closer to 1 30. We were able to go to the hospital. And so it didn't seem like that bad. I just couldn't like eat and I only could drink like water or something all day. We got to the hospital and we had, we did end up having to wait like two hours before they actually had me do anything because, so it was kind of like still four ish o'clock, I think by the time I, I like went to pre-op. During that time, Paul was able to go with me. It was like, it was last June, 2020. So it was the middle of, or tapering in the summer of COVID. And um, he was still able to go with me. I was allowed to have one person. And he even was able to go with me into the pre-op area, which was really nice um, because there was some time spent back there. But when we finally did get called back to go to pre-op, kind of funny, one of the first things I did was they told me to pee in a cup. And I like before I even like got in the bed or did anything and so I did that and I didn't think about why and then uh when I came back and the nurse looked at my chart she's like oh you're pregnant I'm like yeah <laughs> and she's like oh well then I guess we don't need this with urine sample and like the sample like sat at the end of my bed like the whole like hour and a half we were back there and like people would walk by like oh do you need me to take this I'm like no 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 she's pregnant and then like even the surgeon and the plastic surgeon like made comments about it it was just weird having my like urine in a cup just like sitting there the whole time when people would come and talk to me um oh during our wait time one thing that was a big blessing was paul's cousin sent us like a video of like an encouraging message he's a youth pastor and sent us a video of encouraging message like personalized for us and like prayed with us and it just was 
really needed at that time as like our nerves were really heightened and I mean I've never had a big surgery before and I didn't know what it was going to be like and you know just like going under general anesthesia and being pregnant it was just a lot on us so um I think what else so during the procedure what they basically did was they went in and they removed as much tissue as they could but they left um like a little bit so that they would be able to use the implant and they tried to do a surgery called a nipple sparing mastectomy but they were unable to because um the it's like the way that the tumor and some of the cancer was touching like that area they just weren't able to spare that and so i just have like one um uh, like scar just straight across i had a great plastic surgeon great um, breast cancer surgeon that were like handpicked by dr benson hafer who i've mentioned before and really really trust them great communication um Dr. Momo was the plastic surgeon and he's like well known in the area um, and he does really, really wonderful work. Unfortunately, we had to like go in and redo everything, but I'm happy with everything right now. Um, so obviously I don't remember anything of the surgery, but they went in and they removed all the tissue and then they put in a silicone implant. When they looked at my lymph nodes, they were clear. So there was no cancer in them. And so they did remove six of the lymph nodes. They had to remove the ones that the dye went into, the can be called your sentinel lymph nodes. Um, like they're your main ones and so they removed those but I didn't have to have all of them removed which would have really complicated things and changed many things and you know caused for problems with like lymphoma down the road so that was a definitely an answer to prayer was that the cancer hadn't spread it was localized to the breast when so I remember like they took me away from Paul because obviously you can't go to the waiting room and I thought because I've had one surgery, small surgery before, that they like put you to sleep and then they take you to the like the operating room. That's not what they did. And I was just so, it was just really overwhelming because they like wheeled me like down the, all these like long hallways. And then they like took me like right into the operating room where like, you know, minutes later they're gonna be cutting me open. And I was like awake and I could see like the tools and like the lights and like the floor and like seeing like everyone like standing there getting ready. My baby's crying if you hear her for a second. Okay, so I have Abby here now. Um, she's kind of sleeping. Um, so it was really scary being wheeled back to the operating room and like knowing that like minutes away they're gonna put me to sleep and cut me open and it was I'm pregnant and it was it was just a lot and it was just really surreal uh, just like being in that room and being awake during that part. And I even had to like scoot myself over and like center myself on the operating table. And it just was like, oh, it was just really strange. Um, and I was just like holding back like my fear and like my tears and just kind of like wanting to be put to sleep so that I didn't have to think about this anymore in a way. Um, I obviously don't remember what happened. I woke up and I just was in so much pain, more pain than I thought. I would be and they weren't able to give me all of the maximum doses of um, pain medicines because of, of my pregnancy and so that was hard I know the nurse was like feeling really bad and he's like I can't give you anymore and I was just like I'm in pain and it was really bad and I was like kind of like on and off awake for a little bit and then once I was more with it they did allow Paul to come back and that was about like 8 p.m. at that time eight maybe nine o'clock I don't remember I don't know and uh, he got to see me for like 10 minutes, maybe, before they kicked him out. And like what he saw, I wasn't good. <laughs> I was just like not with it and in so much pain. And the nurse was struggling to give me, like to help me. Um, he was doing it the best he could, but there's just, he couldn't do much because of the pregnancy. So Paul had to go home because of COVID rules and restrictions. And I went to like short stay surgical that night. Um, my operation was like, I don't know, four hours long, but then six hours with like, um, by the time, I don't know. I don't know how long it was. Paul said it was really long. Um, and, um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, and 
normally this actually could be an outpatient outpatient procedure, a mastectomy, but because of the pregnancy and because they were doing the reconstruction with, along with the pregnancy, they did just have me stay one like one night. And so it wasn't even 24 hours I was in the hospital, which was surprising. Like I you know, went in around two, I had the surgery, I stayed overnight, and then I think I was home by like noon the next day. I did get sick to my stomach. Um, quite a bit after the surgery, like a lot of nausea and puking, and I'm normally not a puker. And it was hard to tell, you know, if it was because of anesthesia in my body or medications or the pregnancy or everything all together, which it probably was, but um, I did get sick. Like even in the car ride home, I got sick in the car. Paul did come to see me in the morning, like early that morning, and he didn't even like wait for visiting hours. He kind of just like knew where they were taking me and then like just showed up and then early with the nurses and the nurses let him um the nurses were so sweet i think i've said this before but i just have <clears throat> grown to love the medical field or the medical uh, profession and, like nurses and doctors and just like how comforting they are and um like how much of like a, a caring job that they have i even got to meet some of lisa's friends who because she used to work at u of m um who like worked close to her and when they found out I was like Lisa's daughter-in-law they were so excited to um, see me and they shared stories with me of their journey with breast cancer and um, they're like they shared a little bit about their faith and it was wonderful so the recovery was difficult I I just have like a new understanding for anyone who has any procedure done even like a hip replacement or a knee replacement or anything like surgery is hard on your body and recovery is hard and I don't know I just take a lot for granted because I'm young I guess and like just I was healthy but it was just very difficult um the first couple days we had Charlotte stay at Dan and Lisa's and um I was just so I was just sleeping I would like walk from the bedroom to the couch with Paul helping me and then like pass out for hours and um after a couple days, the pain did get a lot better. That was the worst part at the beginning was just the pain. Um, I had a lot of pain in my armpit and um, I had, I had, so I had one drain and um, it came out within, I think six, day six, it came out, which is pretty early. Uh, they like have you like measure like fluid and all this stuff and you have to like strip it every couple hours. And Paul, Paul did that for me. Um, but then at, after a certain like amount of time, they like measure the flu, you measure the fluid and if it's like reaching a certain threshold, then you're able to get it removed. And those, once that was removed, there was a lot of relief and it like that area felt better, but I just had like a lot of pain, a lot of bruising. Um, I had to like wear like a tight compression for a couple weeks. Couldn't take a shower for a while. <laughs> um, until I think until the drain came out. Yeah. So almost a week I couldn't take a shower, like a real shower. I could like do like a sponge bath. Um, but I also was extremely bloated. Like I look, I was only seven weeks pregnant, but I look like six months pregnant. I swear. I was so bloated. Even Paul like said, like agreed that I was. And, um, the hardest part, you know, was uh, like after a while was just like holding me back because I'm a person who likes to do things and just get stuff done and, you know, go run, run, run. And I just like had to take it easy and the doctors kept telling me that the more I take it easy, the like better the recovery. And I mean, at six, eight, at eight weeks, I mean, I was able to go back a hundred percent almost. <laughs> um, and then also another hard part was just not holding Charlotte for eight weeks. That was really hard. Like I couldn't pick her up at all. And so she um, would spend the days with her grandparents and then the evenings with us for like the first month ish. And then, um, once I got a little bit of strength and, you know, she like, I'm thankful that she was older. She was almost two. And so she was able to do some things on her own, you know, like I could hold her hand and help her, you know, but I couldn't take her out of her crib. I couldn't lay her down in her crib. So I couldn't put her to bed or anything. And so that was really, really difficult. Um, Paul and I would go for like really short walks at first. Um, they told me like not even to get my heart rate up because like that would like produce more, like when I had the drain especially, that would produce more fluid. And they just wanted me to like completely recover. And so I followed all the rules. Paul made me follow all the rules to like a T. He like had everything highlighted in my discharge papers and I followed all the rules and I recovered really well. 
So that is um, that story. <laughs>